This week's episode is brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. Hey, can't beat that. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back to Press for Champagne. We have Brandy here. And Danny, I'm, I'm here. here. I'm here childless this weekend. Ugh, this weekend, so Jesus. sad, you guys. How adorable is Rowan? If you guys haven't listened, a why are you listening out of order? First of all, <laughs> second of all, if you haven't seen her picture, why are you not following us on Instagram? I'm feeling real saucy tonight. So get yeah. on there, follow us, like us. Um, but she's adorable. Yeah, I've actually been here for like a full on hour. Me and Brandy have been talking this entire time. So. Um, it's been it's been getting real around here. Yeah. So we got don't worry, we got all the bitching out before we got on the yeah, podcast because we're nothing but rainbows and sunshine. So I've right. already <laughs> cried twice in the last twenty four hours. Just bear with me, you guys. Which is so wild because like I'm Brandy not and I are emotional. Not, yeah, we're not criers. <laughs> and so like when it happens, number one, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> number two, it's Danny just, did offer a hug, which is like I knew it was like crossing a line. <laughs> you know, I feel like. I feel like that's the appropriate thing to do. It's not that I wanted to give she her a did. hug. It was like a, do you want a hug? <laughs> <laughs> but if you say yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be real fucking it's awkward. Be weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brady, what have you been up to this week? You know Besides what? crying. <laughs> yeah, besides crying before, besides just falling apart here. Um, really, the one thing I wanted to share with everybody is I actually took my own like date advice. Okay. Here this past week and went to an Asian supermarket in Omaha. Mm -hmm. Super interesting. Highly recommend. I went to one. Oh, I'm going to give the wrong street. But I think it was 84th. I think I'm telling you the correct. 84th. It's by the Chuck E. Cheese. If y'all know it right off Dodge. Okay. If anybody knows. Um, Just super interesting. I mean, there was like a, a water trough on the floor full of live crabs. Okay. I mean, tons of, like, fresh-ass seafood. Like, you're not getting that at high or Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. You can buy, like, the rice came in pallets. Like, 10, 20, 30 ba- pound bags of yeah. rice. I bought a 10-pounder because I was just like, YOLO, we're here, we're doing this. Um, Is that the only thing you bought? No, we bought um, really into Indian food right now. Mm-hmm. So, bought some, like, Indian food... Um, Indian food, some Indian, uh, uh, like sauce. Okay. I don't know. I yeah. forget. There's like a like curry cor- sauce? Like korma and curry. Okay. One of those, um, bought some of that, bought rice. Oh, and then bought some noodles because we were talking about making like homemade ramen. Yeah. And, um, pad thai. Yeah. And so bought the noodles for yeah. that. So. I also have ramen noodles at my house, like the act, not like the bag. Yeah, like the... it's not, don't get me wrong, they have that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of the frozen, like in the frozen food section, which was really interesting, like the, is it moki? Is that how you say it? Those moki? like uh, frozen ice cream ball yes. things. Yeah, just like, honestly, you guys, it could be like a really fun time just to like, if you're adventurous with your food, which I am. Yeah. The other person was not so much, but <laughs> <laughs> I am, and I would have honestly, like, it would be fun just to take, like, $15 and buy some random stuff, mm-hmm. and they have a huge selection of sake, so if you're into sake. Oh, yeah. Like, just super cool stuff. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. I, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Um, I'm down for that. Like, that sounds like a good idea. I really like that. So that's, uh, other than work. Which is blank, blank, boring. Yeah, I hear you. What have you been up to? Um, so it was like a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Well, Saturday was windy as fuck. Oh my god! What? Is, yeah, was it not amazing? It was super amazing. So Sunday, I had um, went to my cousin Carlene's house and had brunch with a couple of like my cousins out there, my husband and the baby. It was the first time that the baby met my cousins out there, so it was very exciting. And um, 
Sorry, we're passing the champagne right now. Um, it's been a day. <laughs> so it was exciting. It was so nice to just a little porch sit and drink coffee all afternoon. It was like, I don't know. That's well, perfect. Just one of those days where you got a little family time in. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my cousin Carlene, she's actually my mom's cousin Carlene, so she's quite a bit older than I am. And I mean that in the nice way, Carlene, I love you so much. Uh, she doesn't listen, but <laughs> I just want to throw that out in case it Just in case she ever listens in like five years, you just want to. But she just reminds me so much of like my grandma. So like, because it, it's like my, on that side of the family and it's just like, just so, That's so nice sweet. to like be around and be around my cousins and like her daughter and like all the, I don't know. It's just, it's really nice. Like it's just one of those things that like, I don't do it enough and I wish I could do it more. And you know, it's just like a nice, like little refreshing family weekend. I love that. Yeah. Um, so then like, that was just, so it's kind of like, just like a slow little weekend. I think Michael and I did something Saturday, but I can't remember. We were supposed to have a date night, like uh, one of our like signature, like, oh, it's Italian night. So I bought like this stuff for like homemade pizza and wine and stuff. And then every single night that we, Michael would come home from work, I was just like, Michael, it's so late. If we, can we do like a date breakfast? Because I, I love that. I'm too, I'm getting like too like tired. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, normally, I'm a morning person anyway. I'm not a night person. So we did a date breakfast um, Sunday morning. Breakfast food is <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, we did a date breakfast, and then that was really it all. So it was just like a nice little weekend. What'd you make? Um, an egg scramble, I think, is what Michael made. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he cooked. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. super nice. Michael does most of the cooking, and I let him. Sometimes I do get wild and crazy and, like, I'll make something, like, adventurous. Like, last week I made, like, this salmon, I think it was, like, a salmon curry recipe from Half Baked Harvest. Yummy. Um, but, and the, the salmon I had, like, they didn't get all the bones out and there's nothing that just oh, ruins. and fish bones. Yes, I can't, God. you guys. It, like, and so, like, I had, like, leftovers and it's just, like, I can't. I can't eat them because all I can mm-hmm. think about is the bone. Biting into a bone. Yeah, that makes me gag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. That's um, rough. So this week we have a drink of the week, which we are drinking. It's called a King's Cup Mardi Gras cocktail. It calls for five ounces vanilla vodka, two ounces pineapple juice, two ounces coconut syrup, two ounces lime juice, champagne for topping off, and some lime slices. So I just want to throw out what we actually used. Um, so... We used not, we just used regular vodka, not vanilla vodka, because I didn't have vanilla vodka. I did, oh, and so for pineapple juice, I wanted, like, the cans, because, like, Brady and I make these drinks, and then, like, we get, like, a fucking gallon of juice, and we (laughs) use, like, an ounce. So instead of buying, like, a whole gallon, I just bought, like, the cans so that we can keep using them, but they only had... That's um, smart. That's smart shopping. (laughs) I'm savvy, you guys. (laughs) So I used pineapple orange juice instead of just pineapple juice. Um, they didn't have coconut syrup, but they had a coconut, a cream of coconut, which I was shocked they had at our local grocery yeah, store. Yeah, this is delicious. I mean, yes. it's kind of settled on the bottom of my drink, but the amount yeah. of foam that this yeah generates between is like the wild. coconut and like the champagne fizz, it's like really good. So those are the difference. So it's like a little less vanilla e, a little more orangey. So it's kind of like an orange Julius almost, but like pineapple. Yeah. So what I did. Was I just, I squeezed the <laughs> coconut cream. I which, squeezed the coconut cream. <laughs> into the cup. <laughs> poured the juice, poured the vodka, poured the lime juice, topped with champagne, stir, stir, stir. Tastes delicious. It tastes like, I don't know, kind of like an orange Julius. Like a little bit of like a coconut orange Julius. You know those Julius. Dole Whips that people Ooh, talk yes, about like at, at Disneyland? Disneyland? Yeah, Disney World, Disneyland. Yeah. That's kind of what I wonder if, this, if you added vodka and made it a drink. Hey, I'm not I'm not mad at it. But it's very fun. We wanted to, you know, like promote Mardi Gras. Is that coming? Oh, yeah, Fat Tuesday. Yes, yeah, next week, I think. Jeez. Isn't it? Or is yeah. that in two weeks? Isn't it the Tuesday right before Ash Wednesday? Yes. I am Catholic. So I'm... it is next week. Yeah, I think. Did you guys know that you can't have a baby baptized during Lent in the Catholic religion? Did not realize. Can you not get Didn't know yeah. that, you guys. So put what, a big... What is the reasoning? fucking no idea i told michael i said you know what i'm not catholic i'm catholic by proxy and i there's like a lot of things that are happened that i'm like it's frustrating you guys but we're not going to get into that because this is not a religious podcast <laughs> brandy's googling why you can't baptize a baby during yeah. lent she'll get back to you on that because who the fuck knows that's um hmm. yeah that's uh 
Maybe somebody can write in and tell us that's a better Catholic than Brandy is. Yeah, because I'm a shitty one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, so this it's week... a, it's not that they can't; it's just that they shouldn't. Oh. Well, I did. Yeah, that's a whole can of worms. Somebody can write in and tell us all the ins and outs of it. But Lent is our desert time leading up to the waters of baptism at Easter, and so that. Um, as we're building up to a thing, we're trying to keep others at a bay. So, does that mean... Okay, I'm going down a wormhole. But yeah. But apparently, it's not that you can't, just that you shouldn't. Yeah. So, that's interesting. That makes me nervous. Okay. Well, you know, um, the, the only reason I mention that is because we had Rowan's baptism class a couple weeks ago. And then the person that we want to baptize her went on a little vacation, which is great for them, like happy for you. Um, so then they just got back and then they're like, well, my, Michael Googled it for some, he's like, oh, I, for some reason I think that you can't. I was like, Michael, you born and raised Catholic. You should know these fucking things. I feel like of all people who would know these things, it would be Michael. Yeah. So yeah. then he's like, yeah, we can't have a baptized during Lent, which the person confirmed. And he's like, well, we could do it like this weekend. And I'm like, sir. Like, Michael, that's a lot to throw together. I need an outfit. Rowan needs an outfit. Like, yes. it's a whole thing. Um, Which, by the way, Rowan already has an outfit, but I'm going to have to exchange it for a bigger size because <laughs> she's going to be bigger by that time. And also, Danny needs an outfit. Oh, yeah. Mama right. needs an outfit because I... Put Hashtag on, chic mama. Yeah. I put on a pair of jeans today that fit me last week. Don't fit me this week. You know what? So, you know, we're just living our best life. Anyway, that's that. That's like a whole other song and dance. Oh, the other thing is, is um, <laughs> right after Lent ends, Michael starts planting. So, I mean, like, we're really cool, just cool, like, cool, you know. Cool. Sounds great. Life there's, is good. There's nothing I love more than Live, being laugh, married love. to a Catholic farmer, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brady, what, what the fuck are we talking about this week? Uh, we are talking about favorite things this week. You want to know what's not my favorite thing? No, tell, I'm just me, tell me. <laughs> tell me. I do have one of those things on this list, but <laughs> we're talking about all of our favorite things. And honestly, right now, I feel like it's a good time to talk about this because we are getting into, you know, we came out of the holiday season. Mm-hmm. We got some sales on some shit that you mm-hmm. might want to get in on. I also think you're kind of coming into, like, if you're looking at like a refresh, you know, when with spring coming i think it's like a wardrobe refresh like a mind refresh sometimes we get so hyper focused on that new year new me that sometimes it's like more of like a spring like a renewal if you will a baptismal oh not till april you guys (laughs) that was not the correct word just (laughs) feel me okay so the first thing we're going to talk about is our favorite products do you have any like favorite products from the past couple of months that you're like do it I do, and I've actually um, recommended these to a couple people, and by a couple people, I mean my mom. Um, <laughs> she loves them. She she reached out to me a couple weeks ago and said, which, while she was here last year with the baby, she saw me using this hair dryer, and she's like, where did you get that? And so it's a Revlon hair brush dryer, so it's like a brush that is a, hair, is a blow dryer or whatever, so it's like a, like a big round brush. And I got it for my bangs, because you guys, bangs are so fucking oh, high maintenance. Your bangs always look good. Thanks. It's the airbrush. So it's like this Revlon hairbrush. I actually first saw it on Lindsay Silberman's Instagram. If you don't follow her, she's an, a really good follow or really good follow on Instagram because she does a lot about like makeup and hair, but also luxury travel. Um, I'm into it. Yeah, she lives. She has an apartment in Miami and a in a an apartment in Brooklyn. So she like is between the two places. Are you the rounded or the flat? Round. Okay. Um, because of the bangs. Plus I need a little volume. I have thin hair. So I feel like the round brush really helps. Um, I know like a lot of people like, so do you do this? Tell me how you do it. Cause this is these, I've seen a lot of mm-hmm. these like air brushes. I just watched one on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Is your hair wet? Like, what are you doing? So I have done it with my hair sopping wet and it does take long, a longer time. Okay. But what Lindsay recommends is that you blow dry your hair till it's damp, like just like slightly damp, you know, okay. like so half dry, half wet. Um, and then you go in there with this tool. And then like, because for me, I still need like the, the flat iron to just like really make it like things put in place Mm -hmm. but it really does alleviate a lot of my frizziness and a lot of like just the time of straightening my hair so name mostly like if I it takes me probably about like five or five to eight minutes to get my hair dry because I have very thin hair um so like it's quick it's easy you just you know 
it's just like you're brushing your hair but like you do it in a way five so like to eight after blow drying or five to eight out of the shower like tail towel dry and then the brush five to eight like if i had wet hair okay oh, Be- that's not bad no it's not but again th- i have very thin hair you I guys yeah so um it works pretty well i like it a lot um I, and like i said i like it for the volume i like it for the bangs and for the frizziness, because I got I got hair issues. The second thing on my list that has really really helped with my um, frizziness and the, just the overall look of my hair is the Bumble and Bubble Invisible Oil Shampoo and Conditioner. You guys, it is like a fucking miracle worker. Like I've had like the hair mask for years, and I use it every once in a while. Kind of like I have the Olaplex hair mask also. Mm-hmm. Um, but this shampoo and conditioner is like. The best thing that's ever happened to my fucking hair. Like, and I've tried... Um, Your hair looks good. Thanks. Well, I had... Well, thank you. I actually slept in my Olaplex last night, so my hair is, like, a little bit like, greasier than normally would because I just washed it out this morning, looks so, good. you know. Looks good. Um, but this shampoo and conditioner, like, it's, like, the best my hair's ever looked straight out of the shower. Like, you know, straight out of the shower, blow dried, leave the door. I just... I have blonde hair, so I have, like, color dyed hair, you know, color treated hair, um... Plus, just years and years of abuse, and I need, you know, need to drink more water, need more collagen, like, need all the things to be, like, young and youthful again. You need uh, an intervention. (laughs) I need, I honestly just need, like, hair plugs, like, a little bit of filler. Some Botox. Oh, my God. Stop. Stop. Uh, But, so, anyway, I really recommend those two things for hair right now. Revlon Hair Brush and the Bumble and Bumble oil shampoo and conditioner we will link all of these things in our show notes you guys and if you don't know how to find our show notes um just reach out to us we'll let you know but it's just like when you're on your podcast app whether it's apple or spotify or whatever you listen to just like click on the episode and then like scroll down those are our show notes so just in case anybody didn't know that well i'm gonna tell you my hair products okay. that i am obsessed with right now so the first one is Milbon Hair Products, which... I've never heard of this. Oh my god. It's So it's a Japanese okay. product. Like, the ingredients are in Japanese. But I started using it because I wear hair extensions mm-hmm. on a regular basis. I'm currently... I don't have them in and I haven't had them in for a while. God, um, your hair's so long. Yeah. I'm just giving my scalp... I was supposed to get them in, but Amanda was sick. So okay. I just didn't... Uh, reschedule and I'm going to Palm Springs next month so oh, yeah. I'll get them put in then so um oh my god I, I can't wait for the Palm Springs uh, outfits I have like yeah sorry that totally I've already started else. my Rent the Runway board I've made some reservations at some insta worthy places mm-hmm. I'm doing it all for the gram okay you guys this is our gonna be another podcast topic for another day of like what we do to prepare for a vacation. Because so much already. There's a lot. I bought new luggage. Okay. <laughs> My sister's going to Ireland this summer and I've always <gasps> asked her like a million what? things. And I'm like, when are you what's your itinerary? What are you gonna wear? All the things and Michelle, she, we have to have her on now. And oh yeah, definitely. Ugh. And she's just like, I honestly have not like got that part yet. And I was like, Well, you need to You need to get with it. Yeah. Because oh, I that need to amazing. know. I live vicariously through other people's vacations. I'm one of those people that's like slightly jealous but super fucking happy when people go on a fun trip i love it you know what made me so happy is that i do a lot of planning Mm -hmm. and so we did like a spreadsheet and i'm so thankful that i have also like a lot of type a besties and so we all kind of like took a day or took a dinner and everybody's like doing their own research and it's going to be like highly orchestrated in the best sort of way but not like overly orchestrated Mm -hmm. But I like that you have a record of where you went. Yeah, right? that's a good idea. And so, luckily... Especially you know, when you start drinking the booze, you kind of forget what you You kind of forget. <laughs> but, like, you do all this research, and so it's nice to keep track of, like, oh, I checked out this Instagram, here's, a, you know. Yeah. And it worked out well because I have a friend going to Charleston and Savannah, and I literally was just like, here's the shit, like, don't go here, go here, like... And yeah. It, it's amazing. Love it. Check out Instagram. I think it's, like, Instagram, Eater open table, Mm -hmm. all of the things. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I forgot. Sorry. Milbon. Milbon hair products. products. So I started using it because of my hair extensions and it's like hair extension approved. You have to, you have to watch, um, there's certain like ingredients in shampoo and conditioner and other products. They're super, super bad for your hair extensions. Yeah. So if you wear them, make sure you're asking whoever your provider is, whether or not it's okay to use that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it's, 
like the smell is great. The texture is wonderful. I've used all, like I've used living proof. I've used a lot of different brands and mm -hmm. the texture of this and the smell of this. And I am smell. Yeah. We still got the deprived COVID right now, but it's really good. Um, so I use the shampoo, the conditioner, and then I use like a leave in treatment before I blow dry right now. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I do have really thin hair. So I wash and dry my hair basically every single mm -hmm. day. And so I, as far as like that, sorry, not to cut you off, no, I, but I just want to say, say this. I, I, I like it when you cut me off. I, know, I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I do too. <laughs> I'm being very happy right now because I have champagne and it's been 24 hours. Uh, I think that the hair washing saga of you should only wash your hair once a week or you should wash your hair every day. I honestly think that you know your hair best right. and you do what's best for your hair. Like if you feel like you look like a fucking slimy dog after two days, then don't wait two days. I, I love a shower. My mom told you all I used to shower <laughs> like twice or three times a day. So not washing my hair is really, really difficult. You cannot wash your hair that much with extensions. It's really really tough on your hair so that's mm -hmm. been one of the biggest challenges for me mm -hmm. with hair extensions so in addition you know so if I'm not doing the shampoo conditioner and the leave-in conditioner which I'm not unless I washed my hair with hair extensions but I'm doing that without on a mm -hmm. daily basis there's like an oil because yeah. you you have to put oil which is wild because your body naturally generates oil mm -hmm. from your scalp, but it's not getting to the ends of your extensions. So you yeah. have to like replace it with artificial oil. Yeah. So I do um, also really love the Milbon oil and I use that a lot mm -hmm. when I have my extensions and I can go sometimes three days, sometimes four without washing my hair mm -hmm. because it really like smooths out the frizz and gets any like kinks or anything out of it. Yeah. I love it. Um, after I started using this half baked harvest, the, um, is it? Yeah. Tegan. Uh, Tegan on half baked harvest also uses the oh. shampoo. And so I was like, oh. So it just like validated yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it validated it. But uh, I mean, Amanda does a ton of research on her products if you're local. So I would highly recommend checking it out. It's wonderful. She's at Jolie here in town. Um, but I really, I'm very, very happy. I've almost switched to all of their products. I haven't used a. a hairspray yet from mm -hmm. them. I'm still using uh, the, I'm going to say it wrong, Amica. I, I yeah. I, I really, use the Amica dry shampoo. That's I one like that's... their dry shampoo and I also like their hairspray. So. You might have already said this, but does this Milbon have dry shampoo? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Amanda, if, if they do, Amanda doesn't carry it yet, okay. but honestly, she's very good about getting new product in. Yeah. So you should definitely As like... chat with her. Dry shampoo is so fucking tricky. Because either it's like baby powder in your hair oh and you're like, God. what the fuck is this? Or... It's... Yeah, like it's too heavy, too crusty, or it's like it doesn't do anything. Or it's just like... It's just like a cold mist on your yes. hair. Yes, yes. But I, li I love the Amica. Amica does a very good job with yes, the dry shampoo. Yes, I do love their dry shampoo. Would highly recommend. Yeah. Um, just as a side note, I do like the Living Proof, because you mentioned that earlier. I like I, the Living Proof um, texture dr spray. Oh, you do? Yeah. Because like it just like... You know, I like their dry hair. shampoo, but I did not love their shampoo and conditioner. I thought it was far too thin. I did not like yeah. the texture. Yeah. Just, I, I only use their texture spray for my, you know, get a little volume. Yeah. I like it. What else do you got? Um, so the, I like I've mentioned on the podcast before. Oh, wait, what? I forgot one thing. Okay. Sorry. So <laughs> when I don't have my extensions in, so I bought my mom, my sister, and myself. Yes, I'm a greedy bitch. This one product... I know you can get it from other places, but I bought them from Nordstrom, mm -hmm. and it's a hair scalp massager. It's like this little, basically, comb brush. Mm -hmm. I'll post a picture of it next week, okay. but this week, whatever. Whatever time you're in. Mm -hmm. When you shampoo your hair, you, like, take this little, like, massager tool, mm -hmm. and, like, when you have extensions, you realize, like, how much you can't, like, truly scrub your scalp all the way, which is kind of gross, mm -hmm. but that's just the reality of extensions. Yeah. There is nothing more satisfying than getting, like, this uh, massage scalp tool when you have shampoo in your hair and just, like, exfoliate. So it's in the scalp. shower that you use this? Yes. It's wow. not something you use after. It's, like, you, re like, 
the shampoo lathers up like so much. It's so crazy. It feels, it's, it's orgasmic. It's so good. <laughs> it feels so good. It's, it's $10. It is like, this is nothing fancy. Do your mom and your sister love it as much as you do? I haven't asked them if it's orgasmic because I feel like it's inappropriate, <laughs> but I love it. I've literally just ordered two more. Like, I, I just want them everywhere. I love it. I can't wait to see what this is. because It's just like the weirdest little, like, you hold it in your hand and you just, like, can really, like, find, oh, yeah. like... It's almost, is it almost like you're in, like, the, you know, salon chair getting someone else's washing your but, hair? But, like, it, imagine that. But, you know, the water hoses yeah. they have? Imagine if that was, like, a comb that mm. you could, like, put down on your scalp. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. It's so good. <laughs> Cannot recommend enough. I love it. That sounds good. I'll have to check it out. Um, so last uh, last Tuesday when we were talking, my sibling, my weekly sibling chat, my brother and sister, my brother was telling us how um, he was making something in his air fryer. And so my husband was just like creeping in the corner. <laughs> Michael's always trying to get out on the sibling conversation. I'm always like, no, Michael, you can't. You're not invited. And so as we're talking, Michael gets on Amazon and buys himself an air fryer. Okay, Michael. So, it, he just bought it last night, so... Has it, he got it yet? No. So many people are, like, super into this. So, I was telling Michelle and Anthony that, like, I feel like the air fryer slash Instapot thing, you know how, like, you don't get it on the first round, and then, like, the first round is like... Did you get into the Instapot? No. So, the... My mom bought me one. Okay, this is funny to anybody who knows. So, <laughs> my mom bought me one, and she bought me, like, a really small one accidentally for Christmas, like circa three years ago Mm -hmm. and I was like yo mom like this like it can't even fit anything in here this is ridiculous (laughs) let's upgrade it to the big one and so she sent me um she sent me I'm using air quotes the return label from Amazon but it was to my old law firm (laughs) so I had to get an email Oh for my. an Amazon return label from my old law firm. <laughs> Shut up. I was like, Tracy, get it together. Like, Tracy. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, it's more funny if you if you know if all, you know all, the ins all and of outs. it. But like it was I was just like dead. <laughs> it's really funny now. Um, but anyway, so I got the big one. Whatever, like the normal, yeah. I'm going to call it the normal size one. I never used it once. And then I had an intern here a couple years ago and he was like moving from the dorms into an apartment and I had like collected all of this random shit that I was going to donate to Goodwill. And mm-hmm. I was like, yo, you want an Instapot? It's literally brand new, never used. And so after he left and went back to college in Illinois, he would be like, oh, I use my Instapot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least it went to a good cause. I, it made me feel so much better. Well, I was telling my siblings that, you know how, like, okay, like, you, the first round of people, like, for a new product, a new something, like, there's, like, the first round that will always be, like, I, you know, I love fucking Katy Perry before Katy Perry was Katy Perry, you know, like, those people. And then you have, like, the second round, which is, like, everybody who discovered this. Okay, like, now we've all discovered Katy Perry, so whatever. Yes. But then you have, like, the third round of people that, like, I refuse to like Katy Perry just on principle because everybody else likes Katy Perry. <laughs> That's where I'm at, you guys. I've not got an Instapot or an air fryer, and, like, I was, like, kind of, like, refusing to get one on principle. Be like, I'm fine. I don't need one. I'm you just know? not, like, to be fair, I'm not a huge, like, kitchen appliance kind of girl. Yeah, clearly neither am I. <laughs> but yeah. on occasion, they're really fucking good. <laughs> So, Michael got one. We'll see how it goes. What Do you have any other products that you're loving right now? Um, I do have one. Uh, so, this came from Oprah's Favorite Things, and it was a Christmas gift I bought for somebody else, but it's a pasta maker. Tell me more. Cause like, um, so, what? it's like, it's this machine, <laughs> and you add in the flour. It tells you how much liquid to add in. And then it literally makes fresh, it like does the whole like fresh pasta so you can have like rigatoni, spaghetti, fettuccine, Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make lasagna sheets out of it. It takes like less than five minutes to do. It's amazing. It's so, so good. Slightly, like it's more, if you don't eat pasta a lot, Mm -hmm. it's probably not something that... You're going to be like, ah, this is worth the money. Yeah. I eat pasta like almost every day. Yeah, the person I bought it for is like Italian, so this is something that they 
eat a lot of and I eat a I eat pasta all the time. It's so good. It's so easy if you want like fresh pasta. I feel like it's a great way to make this fresh pasta, focus on the sauce. Mm-hmm. Just the easiest thing ever. That's it's like so one of my amazing. regrets about our honeymoon is that we didn't do like a pasta making class. Ugh, but next time. Right? I'll go back. Don't worry. We're going back to Italy. Ugh. We're supposed to go back for a five year, you guys, which is in 30 days. <laughs> like, okay. Well, you know what? Six, the seven year itch. We've got all kinds of things coming up here yeah. that we can do that for. And when I say we, I mean, I'm going along <laughs> with you. Sorry, Michael. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean that my plan to go. I'll go with anybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love a good pasta maker. But you brought up Oprah's favorite things. And one year I bought something off of Oprah's favorite things list. It was like literally these, like the sweatpants suit. And like Ooh. it pilled so bad. Like got those little like balls, you know? Oprah, what the fuck? I know. It was like, it t- turned me off, Oprah. Like what the fuck? This, this is from William Sonoma. Um, very, like the initial, there was almost World War Three the first time that we used the pasta machine. Shit was oh, about to go down. Takes like, a little was trial and error. Fucking brawl that happened. <laughs> um, but luckily, you know, we persevered and ended up making pasta that same night. <laughs> we we made it through. But now that we know how the machine, like, mm-hmm. it just takes a little getting used to. Yeah, you do have to have the right kind of like flour and stuff, and it's fun to experiment. Like if you're trying to make you know more like vegetable based pasta you can do all kinds of things it's Mm -hmm. just it's super easy super fun yeah highly recommend one of my favorite love it i can't wait for you to make me some pasta sometime literally in a couple weeks i'll make you pasta sweet i'm down so what have you been watching lately what are your favorite shows and movies um okay so first of all on netflix Inventing Anna. I'm not all the way done yet, Neither so I'm not going to, like, give any... Like, I think I'm, like, four episodes in. I, yeah. You guys, her this voice... This is wild. Okay, have you, had you heard about, about the story before? The, yes. Okay, so yes. had I. So, in case anybody hadn't, her name, Anna Delvey slash Sorokin. She was, like, this, like, con artist. Is she German? Is she Russian? We don't know. It was this girl who lived in New York City and basically put on this front that she was like this arist- European aristocrat mm-hmm. um, living like the most elaborate lifestyle living in a hotel that was probably several thousand dollars per night. Yeah. Um, and just was like swindling yes. people left and right. And it's incredible what she was able to pull off. It really is. And it's just like a weird... It's sociopathic. For sure. Um, there, I don't like the Netflix version. It's my understanding that Netflix bought the version. I was talking to somebody this weekend. They bought mm-hmm. the version of the journalist who wrote about this. Um, mm-hmm. And so they bought her perspective of the story. Okay. I believe that HBO Max bought Anna Delvine. Yeah. Her version of the story. And that's frankly the version I want to I want to see, I want to hear, I want to know about. The journalist is just kind of like, it's not doing it for me. No. It's very interesting, and I would still recommend watching it in anticipation of the HBO Max series. I agree, but I'm interested to know, like, if the H... Because this person is clearly a fucking sociopath. Oh, for sure. Like, you will... If we get her side of the story, we'll never fucking know what the hell's going on. Because, like, Mm. she is, like, the queen of lying. Like, that's her job. She's a full-time liar. It's wild it really is it really really is and i follow her on instagram now because like it's fucking hilarious wait is she still alive and well she yeah i know she did get released from prison. yeah she's out of prison she's on instagram i think it's at the real anna delvey let me just double check but um but just to be clear she is not european aristocrat no aristocracy. but god her how voice. do you say that word aristocrat aristocracy <laughs> that's not right <laughs> aristocracy <laughs> <laughs> well it's aristocracy <laughs> But she's not an aristocrat <laughs> cat. <laughs> the movie Aristocats. I'm dying right now. <laughs> you know, it's like when you have you ever like convinced yourself that and is not a word. Like you've read a word so many times, you're like and and and. One time, I dumbed myself down. I was like the the. The guy was like, "That's not a word." It is a word. You guys, there's a little bit of vodka or champagne scent. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, anyway. Anyways. She's at- She is not. She, like, was very, like, what I would consider middle class 
She <laughs> was born in Russia, grew up in Germany, if I remember correctly. And if that is truly... Okay, so the, I read, did read something that the actress that plays her on the Netflix series went through a lot of, like... um speech therapy to get her accent just right. It's the same actress who, if you guys are into Ozarks, mm-hmm. who plays on the Ozarks. And yeah. I can't think of the character. I don't know because right I watched the Ozarks, but yeah, I get you. I do like, watch that. But like it was like so annoying the entire time because it's just like, I can't even, I wouldn't do it justice. But anyway. It's it's like a very like mousy but not kind of voice. Yeah. It's like, and it's like, it's like I'm trying so hard to be European, but I'm not European. It's weird. Yeah. So anyway, her on Instagram, she's the Anna Del V. So. I'm going to have to watch. But it's my understanding that she took the deal with HBO Max. She did not profit a shit ton from it. I mean, she made whatever the restitution was. Oh, you guys, was. this is us passing around the champagne bottle. I'm so fucking loud. It's, it's been a day. You want me um, to finish this? What? Did you want me to finish this? Yeah, that's why I handed it oh, to well, you. Yeah. If I wanted to finish it, I would have finished it. Well, I feel like I've got like, a, more of my glass. Than that's because did. I've drank more. Uh, shocking. <laughs> Anyways, she, I think, I read the contract price, and I want to say it was, like... Did you, like, get in there, like, lawyer lawyer deep and, like, get some, like, back channel, like, black market shit? Black, what do you mean? The, the dark web? <laughs> no, I didn't. I feel like the I didn't lawyers use dive. the dark web, so, like... Uh, yeah, we, we're all in the dark web. <laughs> no, no. I just I, feel like you know I how to... I don't give Google, a shit that much, I just honest. feel like you know how to, like, Google things that are different than, like, if I Googled something. No, we don't... It's not really Google that does it for you. It's, like, <laughs> other resources. <laughs> oh, you're not, like, big in it? <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, you can, like, find stuff and know what's legit and what's not, but... Um, I want to say it, it's it like it wasn't crazy mm-hmm. what she got. Um, I'm gonna Google it right now okay. because it's really yeah. The, I, like I said, I'm, we're only a couple episodes in, but it is interesting. And this like boyfriend, I want to know. The other day, that was wild. On her Instagram, she said, "If you want to know who the real boyfriend is, the first person to pay me ten thousand dollars dollars will get his name." So I mean, like she's still like on. Excuse me, she's still on Instagram, like conniving. So Vanity Fair back in 2022 on February 15th. So, so just a four like, short days ago yeah. from this recording. <laughs> well, a little bit longer than that, right? The 15th were eight Oh, is so today not the 19th? We're on the 23rd. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> what year are we in? <laughs> You guys, I have drink more, but Danny, whoa. <laughs> Why did I think it was 19th? Oh my god, I'm oh crying. My god, I'm dead. <laughs> I am dead. So vanity fair, huh? I'm trying to. <laughs> It's a vodka. Yeah, first, that first does vodka it. That does it. In. We're going to get dinner after this, so we're just trying to reel it in. Next time we should have got dinner before. Yeah. No kidding. I did offer. So Shonda Rhimes is oh, who her. produced um, the Inventing Anna series on Netflix, and that she was not um, paid for. That was, they bought the rights to the... Um, like I said, the journalist, the journalist yeah. version. And if you guys watch, you'll know. Um, I do think that they did a pretty good job of, like, casting the characters because the real Anna Sorokin, Anna Delvey, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say, um, it, she's very, like, she's very plain. Yes. And it's funny Very, like, hearing. non, like, um, <clears throat> I don't want to say, like, very basic, but like in a way that like basic, yeah. Her friend, one of the friends on the on the show that loved her apparently, re- like really made it like known. Like that's like one of the things that they keep like kind of like hounding into you is that like no, she was born to like in luxury, like because that's just like the persona that she really personified. Like she was really committed to this character that she built for herself. And honestly, I'm a little jealous. I need to like really like get in there with my own character. Like she was. I mean. The fact of the matter is she, so long story short, she was sentenced to 12 years in state prison, fined $24,000, and ordered to pay restitution in almost 
two hundred thousand dollars approximately. That's like nothing compared to like all the money that she like. Swindled. Honestly, if you guys watch this, you're gonna be like, that was a slap on the wrist. That was like a weekend in fucking Montauk. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so she was released in February of. 2021 so last year and then so Ooh, right in the midst of a pandemic right yeah Yikes. not cute not cute <laughs> so she only served two years and then she was detained by immigration and customs because she overstayed her visa oh yeah. and so that, get your shit together yeah, just not not good um i believe that she um she was paid Three hundred twenty thousand dollars, and allegedly Netflix did pay her the three hundred twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars for a version of her story. However, I have also heard from other sur- sources online, various look it up, that HBO Max also paid her um, for her story for the series. So she owed approximately two hundred twenty-five thousand between the restitution and the fine that she was charged with. Or sentenced with, mm-hmm. and you guys do the math. You know, mm-hmm. she was left with approximately a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, she's currently awaiting deportation back to Germany, where she's a citizen of. But it's um, very interesting. The other show that's supposed to come out on HBO Max is called Generation Hustle, and. I'm very curious to watch it. It's it's just like <laughs> the people she was socializing with, the connections mm-hmm. she was making by just literally pretending are just mind-blowing. I know. Mind it just blowing. goes to show that, you guys, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah, literally. <laughs> you can be a con artist if you want to. What are you watching? Um, so right now I'm currently watching a bunch of reruns. You guys, there's like nothing fucking good. I will say I am watching Mrs. Maisel. Mrs. Maisel came out last week. Don't spoil it because okay. I have not started. I'm going to spoil one thing, which is really not a spoiler. These bitches are only releasing two episodes a fucking week. Instead of releasing the whole season. <gasps> oh, the, I thought they did the whole season. I thought it was like super far behind. No, these okay, motherfuckers God. are releasing two episodes a fucking week. It's You know what I think it was? I think it was HBO Max with the And Just Like That releasing yeah. one episode a week just like they used to do. Yeah. You guys, we don't want that. I I don't, but I also love it because it like controls my... Yeah, you guys, I have a very addictive personality, so I need my shit when I need my shit. I do too. But... I think that's why they're doing it. I can, that's I, just my opinion. I understand. I can see why, but you guys, I'm just not into it. So so I'm behind like four seas- four episodes? Uh, no, I think... Just two? The, just two, because oh, I think good, the new episodes good. will come out on Thursday, so tomorrow. Uh, well, I'm going to be behind. Yeah. Me. But whatever. So, okay. um, so they're re- releasing two episodes a week. I'm assuming it's another 10 episode se- or season, which is so annoying, you guys. What happened to 22 it's episodes? It's such a good se- Like, it's such a good series if you have not watched it. Oh, I love it. But you I've guys, I've talked to so many as- people about it, and they're... If you haven't seen it and it's not on your radar, you're like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But once you're into that first you're season, in. you're just like, give me more. I made the mistake of like, excuse me, like Googling it because <gasps> why? And some people like had some like <laughs> shitty reviews. I was like, fuck off, no. everybody. I love it. I so love it just goes to show that you just have to like watch the shows that you like. Do you don't need to care what the critics think? Just want to throw that out. Yeah. So anyway, um, <clears throat> just wanted to throw out a couple things I'm looking forward to. The new Fantastic Beasts movie, which is Fantastic Beasts or Secrets of Dumbledore, is coming out in April. Is that all, like a Harry Potter? Yeah, for all my Harry Potter okay. fra- fans. Um, and oh, I, I watched Encanto today. Oh Jesus! And if you guys have, if you guys don't have kids or like haven't watched it, you should I still don't. you should still watch it because honestly, it's fucking good. Is that the one where like the girl is born and she feels like she doesn't have a mat? No. Okay. No, I don't know. What, finish what you're saying. Like she, the whole family has like a magical yes. power and she doesn't. Okay. Yes. I've seen previews and it looks cute. I don't hate it. It is super good. I love it. I love Disney movies when they like put in a little bit of adult humor, which they did. I think there's good messages sometimes. I watch them with my nephews. There was another one. It was on Netflix and it was about like, honestly, like technology taking over mm-hmm. the world and it was really good. Yeah, you guys, I really liked Encanto. Obviously, my daughter's like two and a half months old, so she has no fucking idea what she's watching. So we watched today. Sounds great. Um, I'm taking my niece to see Sing 2 on Sunday, so we're very excited about is that. Is that Karen LB? Uh, no, we're going, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to Norfolk. We're okay. going a little. So her birthday was in November, 
at the end of November, but yeah, in case you guys can... remember, like, I had a baby early December. We were supposed to have a Danny and Adeline day. Never happened. So we're having it on Sunday. Oh, that's sweet. So we're going to go out to eat and watch Sing 2. Aww. Maybe get some Manny Petties. Yeah. Um, another thing that if you guys are not watching or have watched. I'm late to the game on this, is but it's Euphoria on HBO. And you guys... What is that about? It is... I'm not old enough to be watching the show. I'm one and a half episodes in. They're on season two now. I'm still on season one. And it is, like, so disturbing. Like, so fucking disturbing. It's about, like, drugs and stuff in high school. And like, okay. It's, like, it's very much, like, you... Might... I feel like I've seen this on Instagram. Like, everybody's Like, obsessed. Zendaya is yes. in it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good or no? Like, should I... It's super good. Don't get me wrong, but it's very graphic, and you need to be in the right headspace to watch it. So, like, if you're... Like, not tonight. Like, no. Like, (laughs) like, they're... Like, so, one of the main characters is transgender in, like, the first episode. Like, spoiler alert, you guys. This is a teeny spoiler. Uh, the one of the main characters is trans and transgender, and she's in high school. And in the first episode, she she meets a guy on like you know like Tinder or some like dating mm-hmm. app or whatever, and goes to like this skeezy motel and like sleeps <gasps> with him. He knows that she's a like a boy, like not not even a man, um, but like as a woman, you know whatever. But this guy is like the dad of one of the other is no. uh, yes, and he like does this whole no th- yeah you guys it's like. So no. it's very graphic, very disturbing. If you're not, like, in the right mental not state. Not okay. Yeah. I'm not okay right now. To hear yeah, that. it's, like, it's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's so fucking graphic. Like. It, wow. And I can't, it's, like, well, it's, like, watching a fucking train wreck. Like, you don't want to see it, but you want to, like. But you also, like, want to watch it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, yeah. anything else you're watching? Because after that deep, dark. <laughs> oh, um, a little a light, more light-hearted. <laughs> um, is HBO Max's Gilded Age. I also had Mrs. Maisel, mm-hmm. Maisel, however yeah, you Maisel, say. Maisel, yeah. Um, I'm very excited for that. I'm also very excited for Bridgerton mm-hmm. coming back for the second Fuck, season. I, love I know some people who have not watched season one because what they are you like doing? they want to binge it. Like they want some. They want all seven it. seasons. They want, mm, they want it. <laughs> so they're waiting for the next season. Um. I, I am not. I want. I want it periodically. <laughs> I have watched most of the first episode of Gilded Age, but like I, I think we talked about the this first a, episode is like two hours. It's a lot. It's long. It's a lot. But we, I think I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast or privately, but like um, Cynthia Nixon is in Gilded you Age. You have a hard time with her, and it's just so distracting. It is. It's difficult, but as the characters develop through mm-hmm. each episode, it gets a little bit better. Um, I'm just super into it. Like if you've gone to New York or gone to any of, you mm-hmm. know, the East Coast cities, I obviously went to Newport, Rhode Island and New York. Yeah. And so it's, I'm super into the history. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's not historically accurate. Oh. But it's kind of fun to see like mm-hmm. how those things developed and what was going on. Like when the Vanderbilts and mm-hmm. all of those names that we know now like we're really making a rise in yeah. American history and what was going on and uh, I mean frankly kind of like the strife that they faced because they mm-hmm. weren't accepted into New York society and how they like redeveloped their own culture and society within mm-hmm. like a very old school love it and I okay I guess I'll finish watching so it I love then, it so. um speaking of that just I, be- I feel like it would like you would like relate to it. Yeah, for sure. The other day I was having like a like a day, so I was laying in my bed with Rowan because she needed to take a nap and she was being a little. Stop it. She her new her <laughs> new nickname is No Naps Rowan because she fucking hates to take a nap. You know what I do too, but I love it. But she sleeps during the night, so I'm not mad at it. But oh, anyway, you can't be. So we were watching some documentaries, and I was watching. There's there's three that I watched. And I've watched all these before, but I just fucking love them. The first one is Scatter My Ashes at Bergdorf's, which is just so fucking good. What is that on? It's about Bergdorf Goodman. I, yeah, into it. Um, That one you actually have to rent off of Amazon Prime, rent or okay. buy. Um, then there's another one about about Tiffany, the, obviously the jeweler Tiffany, which yes. is super good. You can That is available either on Amazon or HBO. I can't remember which one. And then the other one was about the fashion editors at Vogue. Which was okay. just so fucking good. Again, that one is also either HBO or Amazon. I can't remember. But love myself a good fashion documentary. So if anybody's got any recs for that, send them my way. Love it. Anywho, so, um, what about, speaking of fashion, 
You got any fashion wrecks? Yeah. So first of all, I bought a pair of Nike, and I'm calling you out, Nike sneakers back in 2020. Okay? I'm talking fall of 2020. Oh, like mid pan- Every early time, pandemic. Yeah. I take a... <laughs> they squeak. Is that a step? They squeak. I have been convinced for a year and a half now that it's because I'm too fucking fat. <laughs> I don't think that's why. <laughs> Realistically speaking, that's probably a false thought, but also could be true. So anyways, I was like, you know what? Clearly, these are not cute to wear out in public, not because they're not cute, but literally because they are loud, and that's not cute. Yeah, I get you, but it might just be your insoles. Yeah, but they came with the shoe. Like, they should not squeak. No, they should, but you could, it's an easy fix. Take them out and see if they still squeak. Pilar told me that she thinks it's because, like, the glue mm-hmm. somehow, like, disconnects and it like makes it start with the insoles what i bought a new pair of shoes (laughs) because i was just like i'm done fuck them yeah they are not also nikes but (laughs) (laughs) my point is is that it's very difficult to find decent looking athletic shoes i really love new balance you know what i'm really into like this vintage 70s vibe Mm -hmm. right now i would say new balance randomly reebok yeah has some very cute shoes Adidas, meh. Nike is probably the worst, which is what I bought, and I'm embarrassed to admit that, mm-hmm. but that is what it is. Why can we not find just decent looking sneakers? This is my absolutely not, my I cannot, I'm not loving, this is my would not recommend right now. You know who you need to follow on Instagram, or if, if you guys don't use the like to know what app, you should, you should is uh, Sella Jane. She lives in Kansas City. Okay. So she's a Midwest gal. She Love gets it. She gets the seasons. Super fucking bougie. Okay. Um, also get that. <laughs> yep. She just put out a spring sneaker blog Damn post. It. Missed it. So follow her. It's C-E-L-L-A Jane. What I did is I actually went to the out. Like I had looked, I'd looked at Nordstrom's. Mm-hmm. I went to Shields. I went to all the places. I finally went to the outlets and I just bought like a hundred dollar pair. Mm-hmm. I was like, whatever. If they don't work, they don't work. But I was very discouraged by the process. So you know who, where I go to find sneakers. Well, you don't even have to buy them from these places. But if you're like looking to be like trendy but not too trendy or whatever like i want them to be cute but also like comfortable and last because i'm not like doing crossfit i'm not running eight miles a day we're running errands in our sneakers we're not working out in our sneakers it's more of a lick on the weekends (laughs) so the three websites that i go to to find like sneaker styles and then you can buy them from anywhere you don't have to buy them for these places but made well Mm -hmm. because they always have like a collab going on Mm -hmm. um free people and revolve don't hate it. Love it. Yeah. Those will give you the trendiest, I'm quoting here, tw- trendiest sneakers for the season. You can find them. And then just Google. Like if you, like, because most of them is like New Balance, Nike, whatever, Adidas. And you can Google it or Veja, what is that, the B-E-J-A. It's okay. a brand, so. There's definitely like some other shoe brands that have, like, that are new. And I'm sure that a lot of people know of, but I'm mm-hmm. just not familiar with. So I always like revert to yeah. what I know. Yeah. Which is um, fine. You guys stick to what, you know, what looks good on you. I don't know if they look good. They no. don't sound good, but they <laughs> look good. <laughs> Anyways, the other thing that I've been kind of obsessed with lately is just jeans. Um, I've gotten a lot of recommendations. I, Skinny jeans are kind of like fading out, and so I need. Whatever, I'm still wearing skinny jeans. I am too. Guys. I'm wearing them. Tell li- I fucking I'm burying me in my skinny literally jeans. Literally okay? <laughs> right now. Um, but I I'm love straight leg jeans right now. But but I love a flare. But like I don't want I like a semi flare. Like I don't want like a boot cut. Like, yeah. kind of flare. Like I want a flare. You want some drama in your jeans? I want some drama. I want a trouser like a like a solid yes, with like, the trouser creased. pockets on the back. Thank you, thank you. It's very difficult to find. Um, but I have received some, if any of you ladies out there have thick thighs and pretty eyes <laughs> and a big booty, <laughs> hi, um, <laughs> these are the recommendations I've gotten. So Abercrombie. What if you got such, ugly eyes? Then you're fucked. <laughs> Just go back to the straight jeans. Go back to the skinny jeans. I don't know where you're getting them from, but these are not for you. Okay, gotcha joking um abercrombie and fitch mm-hmm. which who would have freaking thought since circa oh five oh six yeah but my bestie pilar told me that they have made a certain like line for more curvy girls mm-hmm. which 
you know, if you have a smaller waist and a big booty and thighs, mm-hmm. it kind of yeah. accentuates that. I have looked into that. I'm going to, I actually have a pair in my shopping cart. I'm going to order tonight. American Eagle is another one, mm-hmm. which I had a great pair of flares from American Eagle back in like 2005 to seven that I love along with a trouser. I always loved their jeans. I thought it was great, but mm-hmm. I have not bought since then. And cousin Katie had this super cute pair on. If you guys follow her, you should. On her Instagram, they went to a country music concert and she kind of had like this like very like fun 70s vibe outfit going on. And they were from American Eagle. So uh, when it. cousin Katie comes back in July, we need to have like a cousin Ugh. Katie night out. Or a whole weekend. You can just come <laughs> for the whole weekend. And then the last brand that I've recently looked into is Good American. Unclear on the fit. I just ordered a pair. I'll keep you posted. But Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Yeah, this is um, Khloe Kardashian's brand. I feel like I can relate to her size and shape and what she's going for. I wish I had that hair, though. Ugh. Extensions. (laughs) Anyways, so I've I've ordered a pair, unclear how they're going to fit, but mm-hmm. definitely the American Eagle and the Abercrombie mm-hmm. were like super price reasonable. Yeah. Just to throw these out there, I always wear Madewell jeans. I that's just my I thing. Lo- I love Madewell. They just Crew. opened a store in Omaha. I went there, I was disappointed. Oh shit. Well, it's Omaha. You guys, sorry. Nebraska doesn't get all the good stuff. Yeah, I went there on the opening day mm-hmm. um, with Pilar actually. We oh. were out there shopping and we stopped in and I was very disappointed in the denim availability. Oh yeah. They didn't I I was expecting like all the denim. I wanted all the shapes, all the sizes, and it was like a table. Just like any other store. Oh, interesting. It was well, very disappointing. Maybe you should put in your feedback for them. I should, but just forewarning everybody, maybe give it a couple of months for yeah. them to like settle in. I also just buy things online too. They get free shipping through returns. Um, I, I was shopping with Pilar this past Saturday, which was such a fun time, but also a, such a good reminder why I shop online I know. so much. Which, you know, we want to support, but God, sometimes it, when you have something it, in your head that you I want, know, it's just it's so hard. hard. And that is the challenge that mm-hmm. like storefronts have today. It really is. Um, the other brand that I've never tried but heard a lot of really good things about is AYR. So <gasps> yes, I saw that. Yeah. So just pencil that in. If anybody, if anybody has tried those, let us know because I'm interested in those. What about you? Okay. <clears throat> so speaking of what we were talking about earlier a little bit with Rowan's baptism, Mama does need a, a cute little outfit. Yes. So I was looking at Nordstrom the other day and it's not so much that I need an outfit, but I do need a, like a nice pair of like shoes or heels or whatever. But you know, I am not like a stilettos person. I'm either like a, a, like a, like a mule with a kitten heel or like a, something that has like more of like a thicker. These are cute. Heel. So the Manolo Blahnik Maysell mules are like my fucking jam. I love a buckle on my shoes. I don't know yeah, why. This is cute. I don't know why I love a buckle, but I do love a buckle. Hashtag so, treat yourself. Yeah. Are you looking at the heel or the no heel? It would be a heel because I like to have... Yeah, like I, a little... I do love to wear heels, don't be wrong, but I don't want like a fucking like five inch heel where my foot's like... I'm literally just like walking up my tippy toes. Like I did get some shoes. I saw them. Yeah. I, w- I went to Bernie's guest room the other night, and all the only thing I saw was this box. And I was like, oh, what do we have here? <laughs> She's, we're not the same size, you guys. Don't worry. Um, so I'm looking Thanks, at- Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at these Maysale, the um, mules, which I will probably try and find either like on the real reel or something, a little secondhand business, you know, because they're very cute. They're super cute. I'm um, looking them up. Right now. Very, very cute. So the other thing that we've talked about on this podcast a lot is about how, like, I, I need a fucking good t-shirt. So over the holidays, I did splurge and buy myself a bunch of Lululemon t-shirts, which... That shit is so expensive. It is fucking quality. No shit. I bought two short sleeves, one long sleeve, and a pair of leggings. But you guys, I bought my pair of leggings thinking that, like, I'm going to be fat for... I'm not, I'm not fat. You guys, it's oh not what I meant. Oh my God, That's not what I mean. bitch. Shut no, up. <laughs> I had a fucking baby, okay? So body dysmorphia skinny. is still a thing and I'm not, but I'm like not pre-pregnancy, all these things. It's like, life's hard, okay? You have a baby and like your fucking shit gets wild. So I bought these leggings and they're like, they don't fit. Like they're too big, but I'm still wearing That's them anyway. Um, but anyway, 
the Lululemon t-shirts are fucking golden. I'm going to continue to buy them in like every fucking color because like they're so good. When I go to Palm Springs, I'm pretty sure there's a Lululemon outlet, so. Oh, hey. So the other thing that I was introduced to the other day was Skims t-shirt. Again, this was a Lindsay Silberman recommendation on um, Instagram. So do you know the brand Skims? Kim yes, Kardashian's I brand. Ju- yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that was her brand. Yeah, it's okay. Kim Kardashian's brand. She created this. It's kind of like, so it started out like a, as a Spanx adjacent. Yes. But now she's kind of also into like loungewear, but she has like this boyfriend t-shirt that literally looks like what dreams are made of. Because okay. I don't know why people feel like women's t-shirts need to have like this cute little like baby doll sleeve. Like I don't want it. I don't want it either. I've got fucking arms, you guys. Like yeah, I, got some, I got some flab. As Go I on. used to say to my grandma Thober, big skin, okay? Like, we... You cute. Stop it. We need, like, fucking coverage in our arms. Like, I want my sleeve to go halfway down my fucking arm. So, anyway, this I don't want that, but I... You like, know, I, I want, want some coverage. Down, like, the, yeah. I want like, some not coverage. my arm. Like, not to my elbow. Yeah. Half, between my elbow and my, my shoulder, good. I'd like it to be halfway appropriately there. So, the Skims Boyfriend t-shirts are legit. The thing that I'm looking for, I have not bought one yet because they are all sold out. Stop it. I cannot get one, you guys. So, anyway, that's on my, that's on my wish list. On my wish list. I'll check it out. I'm into it. Yeah, okay. Last, but you guys, we're wrapping it up. Anything else you got for miscellaneous, Brandy? I really don't. I mean, I think podcasts right now, um, Heather McMahon cannot wait to go to her oh show. Oh, my God next month it's gonna be so exciting we will take all the pictures we have a drag brunch booked and we will be reporting live yes so oh my god if you have not followed us on instagram you best be getting to it because hi be there be square Mm -hmm. okay i have a couple of miscellaneous things uh number one eleanor leftwich on instagram is this just like this random person on instagram from minnesota if you follow me on instagram you, you heard me talk about her a couple weeks ago she literally has the shoe closet that dreams are made of. You guys, she works in egg, like agriculture, and she literally has like just like literally an entire closet full of like bougie ass name brand shoes. How and does she how how is she paying for all this? She works in egg. I don't know. Like she's just apparently apparently they pay you a lot of money. Like cat, apparently, Danny, I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> She sold a cow or two. I don't know. I don't want to tell you. Um, so love her. I'll I'll um, link to her Instagram because honestly, she her fucking shoe closet is Ugh. fucking legit. But she does like a little like kind of like just out for the day. She doesn't really. She's not. She's not casual, you guys. She's fucking bougie. Like she's got like vintage Dior gowns that she. Just, Ooh, yeah, like, that she just has. Like it's honestly my favorite. She's my favorite human being. We, I feel so schleppy right I now. I know. She's like, I don't really wear jeans. I was like, yeah. But you're working cattle? And I mean, like, no, 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 no. She doesn't work. I think she works in, like, egg business. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not, like, on the farm. And she's wearing Louboutins? Yeah. Okay. I love it. So then, love her. I'll link to her Instagram in my show notes. Following and, now. Yes. Um, still trying to make every single recipe that half Bake Harvest oh, has on her website. So good. So. I'm obvious, and I'm obsessed with following her on Instagram. Like, her family dynamic, honestly, is, like... Into it. Just love it. She's redoing her barn slash house thing right now, and I'm really into following that, too. So, I love a good, like, home design remodel situation going on. Interior design, I'm really into it. Um, okay, Betty Halbreich. So, if you watch the documentary from Bergdorf Goodman, you will see Betty Halbreich on there. She has been working for Bergdorf's, Bergdorf's for 45 years. She's 95 years old. Stop it. She is... Stop it. She's a stylist there, and she literally will be like, no, that doesn't look good on you. Take it off. Like, I fucking love her. She has Betty, two, call me. I need you. <laughs> she has two books. One of them, one of them I listened to on Audible a couple years ago is called I'll Drink to That. So okay. fucking good. I'm reading another one of her books now. Looking I also, up now. <laughs> I also follow her on Instagram, which she's got like a little saucy Instagram account, but she's 95, so she's like, I don't know. She doesn't like, give a shit. No, no fucks given. Um, just fucking love her. Just it kind of. If you listen to her, 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 I'll drink to that book. She had tried to commit suicide after her yeah. husband and her like their marriage kind of dissolved, oh and my so it just kind of goes to show that you can go through a dark time in your life and still live a long and prosperous life like that happened and then she started working at Bergdorf's like she's been working there since she was 50 she's 95 you guys like 
I don't know. I just like, and she loves her job. It's not like she needs the money. She lives on like the Upper East Side. Like she's fine financially. Wow, this is incredible. Um, another good book that I read lately, but it does not come out until April, is Funny You Should Ask by Elisa Sussman. It is really, really good. You guys just write it down. Funny You Should Ask. It's good. Just take my word for it or Google it. Read the synopsis. Loved the book. Comes out in April. So write it down. The last thing that I am obsessed with, this is my last of my favorite things that I cannot get enough of, is Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson's relationship. Oh, it's so wild. I literally cannot get enough. And if these two get married, I will fucking die. Just dig my fucking grave right now because I will just go and lay in there peacefully and just bury me in the dirt because I cannot get enough of those two. Love it. It's I, it's so weird, but so good. I have... The, I'm I, shocked it's lasted this long. Me fucking too. I'm, okay. I'm shocked it ever happened at all. And I just love... Pete Davidson. I know that people think, oh, he looks like a troll. Blah, blah, blah. I like him. I like him. I fucking love him. Nothing, nothing's better than a funny guy. It doesn't matter what you look like as long as you're funny. Just a little tidbit, little That's side note. That's what we're to... going off of. <laughs> Just a little side <laughs> note to all the men <laughs> listeners out there. As long as you're funny, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> anyway. But you have to have clean sheets, so. Fucking preach. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Davidson still lives with his mom, so. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys, that's all we got this week. Okay, catch ya. Love catch you next time. Love you, miss you. Bye. Bye.